Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, pleasure to have our next guest join us. He has a new series of paintings that he's uh, unveiling uh, starting February 17th. Absolutely, and we're surrounded by paintings right now and uh, joined by artist David Tycho. How are Hi, you, David? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to see you. So Thanks tell us about me. this collection. We've got a couple pieces behind you, but tell us about the collection itself. Well, this series is, um, in the past I did a lot of geographically based series. Uh, Black Tusk was one of them, the yeah. River Series was another one. A good reflection of what you like to do as well. You exactly, know, so I, love, I love hiking and things like that. But by naming a series Black Tusk, obviously the paintings have to be about Black Tusk. <laughs> and calling it the River Series, the paintings have to be about rivers and they have to have rivers in them. So I found that a little bit restricting. So this time I decided to name it The Vital Gesture, which uh, kind of reflects the style of painting or the way of painting, the method of painting as and opposed to the actual explain content. Explain the style because uh, it has a very interesting homage and, and, and sort of a, a, an interesting root to it as well. Yeah, I, I had Gordon Smith as an instructor and Jack Darkus out at UBC and they were very much into brush, brush strokes and how the paint was laid on. And they weren't so much, they didn't care so much about imagery and things like that, but, but the brush strokes were very important. So that was the beginning of really worrying about paint application. Then I went to Asia for about four years. I was in Japan for three years and I saw some Buddhist monks doing giant calligraphs on a, on a temple floor yeah. where they would roll out the white right. paper, dip these mop-sized brushes into the ink and then walk backwards and, uh, and do these And the calligraphy that they do has such a distinct look and Absolutely. feel to it. Absolutely, yeah. It's black on white and in the West we often associate black with darkness and things like that but not in Asia. They, uh, the calligraph itself, if it's light and applied in a very light way, then obviously that has a, a light message. So when you're painting and, and brush stroke becomes so important, do you need to be in a certain mindset uh, to achieve what you want before you're even in the studio? I would say so, yeah. Um, but getting to that mindset is through the process of painting. So you may come in to the studio in a bad mood and start painting. Um, as I progress, I eventually get into that zone and then the brushwork gets better and better. Do you know that zone when you hit it? Can you yes, feel it? Yes, absolutely. And uh, it doesn't happen that often. <laughs> you know, the paintings look like they've been done very quickly, obviously, but uh, yeah. they are layers and layers thick, and uh, in many cases, I'll have failure after failure after failure, and eventually I'll get a good on one. On the same canvas? On the same canvas or on different canvases. I usually work five canvases at a time. And if this one isn't working, I move to the next one. If that one's not working... Let's take this one here that's behind us, for example. Stunning. Tell us about this. Uh, this series in general, and including this one, I decided not to go on a landscape theme, but I decided to uh, focus just on my various environments. My studio is in an urban area in um, East Vancouver. Uh, I live in Kitsilano, so I walk along the beaches, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, I decided to incorporate grey into my paintings. Vancouver is a gr very grey city, a of course. Bit. <laughs> and, uh, I had never used grey before, so just looking at driftwood and things on the beach, all of these kinds of things, they've just sort of incorporated themselves. And I kind of take uh, little photographs, mental photographs, as I walk around and uh, process them, and then they come out in various forms. So and what about the other one behind you? The colour is so striking on this piece. This was inspired by, believe it or not, asphalt. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was walking along, a, or I was riding my bike actually along a cycle path over in Kitsilano, and they had paved one of the gravel um, cycle paths yeah. with black asphalt, and it was just so black, and I thought, this was horrible. I really, <laughs> yeah. but then I looked at An invasion. <laughs> an invasion, ex exactly. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. But then I thought, wow, look at the contrast of the black and the green, the green grass and the black asphalt, and I thought, that's actually quite beautiful. Yeah. So that's probably where that one came from. Amazing. Well, and this is the, the beautiful thing, I think, about art and, and, you know, such a simple idea of putting color and brush strokes on canvas because you never really know what that's going to trigger in people, uh, you know, that evocation. It must be interesting for you as an artist to, to just listen to what people are saying in, instead of, you know, this process of telling people what your inspiration was, to hear what people think when it's they see It's fantastic, actually. And I went into a gallery that was showing my work one time, and there was, and this, just <laughs> and there was this woman walking around, and she had this puzzled look on her face. And she looked at one of them, and she looked at me, and as she left, she said, uh, he must have been abused as a child. <laughs> Which I wasn't, of course. 
I have wonderful parents and yeah. a very normal upbringing. But I thought, whoa, you whoa. got that from that. And, yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, I, we were talking about this this idea of an artist and and their progression through life and and the way that's reflected in work as well. And sure. and these different periods that you go through as being almost a biography of you know whatever it is you're expressing at that time. Absolutely. And uh, my earlier work was figurative, and believe it or not, uh, my very early work was quite realistic. But over the years, I've sort of pared things down, yeah. uh, gone after the essence, and tried to get rid of the superfluous details. So, um, speaking of superfluous, uh, <laughs> Michael and I, kind of uh. as a joke, um, a couple years ago, were Why asked we to do some this? paintings. And this is mine. This is quite I good, isn't it? Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to lie. I, I respect your audacity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, when no, I did, no, no, see, no, no. Let me I'm just kidding. say I am I'm an kidding. unwilling participant in this because <laughs> I was Fiona, just... I think it's wonderful that you have the guts to, to even try. <laughs> All these people who are looking around laughing and that. judging, yeah, and, they haven't tried. What do you think of Michael's uh, plate? This is the first step, obviously. You've, 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 you've got yourself a canvas, you've got some paints, and you're putting it down. And so many people say, I wish I could do that or I want to do that, but they never do. Don't so, worry, I'll never do it so again. So hats off to you for, <laughs> Thank you. for doing that. How many pieces are in the series, uh, this particular there series? There are 22, I believe. Um, but the gallery will probably have about 16 on yeah. at any one time. Well, let's just show a couple more while we're chatting, because we're going to run out of time before we get to all of them. But is it hard for you to part with your paintings once they're sold? It is, but. Uh, I think as I get older, um, it's like your children almost. You know, yeah. eventually, you, eventually you want them to leave. Do you leave, keep a little something from, from every collection? I mean, do you, do you hold a couple back just for yourself personally? To I, ironically, the one that I like the best is the one that never sells. Really? Yes. So it's it's almost um, like clockwork. I can I can predict that that oh, one really? won't sell because I love it, and that usually happens. Oh, I'm going to ask yeah, you which yeah. one that is after after we're off air. So I'm lucky enough to offer everything for sale, but also have most of my best works for myself. Well, Isn't you that can funny? see how stunning his work is, and this is another beautiful series from David. Uh, Thanks, it opens David. Uh, the opening reception is February 17th, and it runs until March 3rd at uh, Petley Jones Gallery. The opening is at six to eight on February 17th, but you can go in there at any time and, and peruse. And I should say that a couple have sold already yeah. before they've even been uh, put up. So if you Not are mine. interested, mine you got to get in there. Uh, so David, if you're looking to collect, <laughs> I could go places. Get her now because you never know what's going <laughs> to happen. You never know.